Welcome back to the Proworks channel, my name is John. This video marks the launch of my first limited build series. Each series will highlight one of my past designs or possibly a new one. I'll have a pre-order open for two weeks before I begin production on the small batch. The plan is to move on to different designs and products with each series. This first run will be focused on my mini apothecary chests. I've made a variety of these in different sizes and I figured it was a great place to start. This video shows me building the initial prototype. I ran into a few issues but sorted them out so that the actual batch run goes smoothly. If you want more details about this series, skip to the 6 minute mark of this video or check out the listing in the description below. Okay, so about this little apothecary chest. I've made various sizes of this design in the past and not a ton has changed with the construction. I was able to get every part from a 5 quarter quarter sawn white oak board. It was oddly warped in multiple directions which made getting the necessary thicknesses quite challenging. During the production, I'll probably use 6 quarters stock just to be safe. The outer case is joined with 5 dowels at each corner. A solid panel will float in a 3 16 inch groove in the back of the box. My new crosscut sled will allow me to quickly cut all the dados which is a good thing because each box has a total of 16 dados. I did run into a small issue with the alignment of the outer case dados so I glued in filler strips and recut them. The downside of using the table saw for these cuts is that the dados go through to the back of the case. It's a minor detail, but I may use a router to cut just the outer case dados. The glue ups from these chests can be pretty hectic. I took a different approach and assembled everything from the inside out instead of from the outside in. This was a huge game changer and made this so much simpler. Instead of assembling the outer case work and sliding the dividers into place, which gets glue everywhere, I started with the dividers and worked my way out to the case pieces. This minimizes glue squeeze out and ultimately saves me a ton of time. Any intensive clamping situations like this will represent a bottleneck in the production. I'll have to A get more clamps and B stagger my glue ups within each run. During times like this I'll also focus my time on other aspects of the production like the drawers. So many drawers. Speaking of drawers, the fronts will come from a book matched panel that is 3 eighths of an inch thick, while the sides will be quarter inch thick ash. I'm using a half blind lock joint to join the fronts to the sides. This is a pretty simple joint to make once you get your fence dialed in. I've never cut it on such thin stock, so I had to make some adjustments to get it to work. This is another part of the build that will be clamp intensive. I have enough clamps to do all 9 drawers at once, but if I'm making 5 or 10 chests at a time, I'll have to stagger these glue ups efficiently. One of the more labor intensive parts of these builds is fitting the drawers. I typically only need to plane the height to fit, but sometimes I have to plane down the sides a bit to get them to fit nicely. This goes by pretty quick, but can get quite tedious. The base consists of 3 inch tall legs and 1.5 and inch tall stretchers. Both have curves routed into them using a template and flush trim bit. I have a little router table on the way which should help me make these quickly and more importantly, safely. I typically use an eighth inch roundover on these chests, but with such a scaled down version, I wanted to make sure the roundovers weren't too dramatic. I found this little 3 seconds inch roundover with a tiny guide bearing. It gives the perfect look and also gets in closer to inside corners, which saves some time sanding. The thicker case pieces and base assemblies still received eighth inch roundovers though. The 
The two base assemblies are attached with a pair of dowels and glue. This should be plenty strong, especially on a chest this small. I've grown to really love the walnut oil finish I've been using lately. It's easy to apply and also easy to supplement down the road. Finishing the inside of the cubbies is a little cumbersome, so I might consider pre-finishing before the glue up. I know batching out a spray finish would save a ton of time, but it's just not the type of finish I'm after for this piece. After two coats of oil, the chest will get a wax and oil mixture on top. Once I add the nine drawer pulls, this little guy is done. Thank you all for watching. As I mentioned earlier, this is the launch of my first limited build series. I hope to do a few of these a year. We'll see how this one goes and what the demand is for this sort of thing. But the first one is my mini apothecary chest. So if you've ever wanted something like this or wanted to give one as a gift to somebody, this is a great time to do so. I'll have a pre-order open on my website for two weeks and that listing will be in the description below. The listing will also have some of the finer details on what to expect, but I'll just go over some of the major highlights in case you're interested in ordering one. You'll be able to choose from two species of wood, Quarasan White Oak, like this one, or Black Walnut. Each box will come with a centerfold book match across the drawers or a row-by-row -row book match. It'll really just be dictated on the material I'm able to source. Each of these drawers is about three inches by three inches on the front and four and a half inches deep. They're not specifically made to hold watches, but it is one thing it would hold very nicely. Here's a, a single watch and pillow. It won't come with the pillows, but I'll be happy to give you the Etsy store that I usually source them from. The drawers are joined using a half blind lock joint, which looks really nice and is also fairly strong on a drawer this small. Each order and box will come with an individually stamped and laser etched leather patch, which will commemorate the limited build series. I will make a few minor changes to the design, nothing major at all. As an example, one of them will be not rounding over the top of these legs. I think it'll just be a better look. So I just want to give you guys a heads up that there could be some ever so slightly minor changes. I am limiting the website listing to US and Canadian shipping only. It's just a matter of estimating shipping costs. If you are interested in having one shipped elsewhere, please email me separately and we'll work on it on a case by case basis. The pre-order will be open for two weeks, as I mentioned, and I will likely round up to the nearest five boxes based on what I get. So if I get like 13 orders, I'll make 15 and just have the extras listed on my website. Um, once the orders start coming in, I'll begin organizing for the material sourcing and get started as soon as I can with the production. I'll probably make them in batches of five or 10 and figure out what works best for me. I hope to get them done within a month or two, but if there are more orders than expected, it'll obviously extend into the three, four month range. But hopefully you guys are patient with me and I'll do my best to fulfill them as soon as I can. During the production, I also hope to release a series of videos going into detail about certain parts of the production. I'm not 100% sure if I'll be able to devote enough time to that sort of thing, but if you're interested in that, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to make it happen. If you guys have any questions at all that I haven't addressed, please leave them in the comments below or just email me separately. And lastly, please uh, take a look at the listing, share it with your friends and family, and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.